on the 23rd, we are going to be having a special knockout tournament. Going to be huge prizes, a whole kit and caboodle out here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to link down below to our Discord for the special tournament time channel. You guys will find the Google form there so you guys can sign up. It's totally free. All right. It's going to be straightforward through the evening. Uh, we're probably going to knock out probably five, six rounds of Swiss and top eight. And it's totally free. All right. Christmas gifts all around. You guys want some free stuff? That's an opportunity I wouldn't want to miss out on. Make sure you guys smash the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. Coming off of double YCS weekend, both Europe and the, oh man, the English YCS. Oh, such a such an interesting week. Bee Troopers running around out here, you know, seeing the, the Facebook groups reing at the fact that, you know, you know, DP in my bug deck, ew, like, so much, so much novelty out there, but we're going to get to see what the big winners were out of this weekend here, so keep in mind, this is going to be pretty much fueled by two YCSs, so interesting enough here, Relinquish Anima maintaining its number 10 presence here, and it's not seeing much play at all at this point in time, but honestly, it's going to be the same story you're going to hear every single time. When you have a card that's under $2, players look at it and they're like, hey, you know what? I can afford that. It gives me an extra deck slot. Remember, the casual player base always drives more than the competitive player base. It's 100% true 100% of the time. All right? And, you know, if the casual player can only spend a dollar fifty two dollars on a card for their extra deck i understand all right very very budget friendly next up is Godarla. well i have a feeling that you're going to be seeing this for a very very long time to come here when you have what was one of the most expensive kaijus for its time here you guys saw that card spinning down off of the market and a lot of players were like oh well you know like 10 bucks is really not inviting for a rare so when you reprint that card at a dollar 65 price points six bucks for a playset post like shipping and you know taxes and everything like that once again looks way more inviting to the average casual player out here also the fact that we've seen this card running around how long at this point in time as a card that we've seen in side decks you know applications out here for the b trooper deck as well all right in-house bug cards will go a long way that's just kind of how the modern situation goes number eight is forbidden droplet well yeah didn't see this one coming. 20 competitors who finished in the top 32 of the European YCS played Forbidden Droplet, which means that Droplet rotated right back into the format here. All right, it's one of the best generic cards available in the game, and unfortunately, you're locked behind two very expensive price points here. It means uh, players are looking at this and like, $100 is in fact ridiculous. I agree with you. All right, we should have probably reprinted. Maybe the next reprint will knock it down to 50. You're definitely two reprints away from true affordability at this point in time which is really really bad and i i get that there are budget alternatives we've seen chalice kind of come into the format and try to fill that void for that generic placeholder replacement here but unfortunately it doesn't get the job done as well as droplet does in some situations especially when the format starts to shift and like more aggressive ways where droplets like your only real saving point it ends up being like that. Now, this one's interesting. Zeus. Zeus has become one of the most consistent best-selling cards, all right, since it was reprinted. I mean, I understand that. All right, if you've been a regular reader, you're probably tired of the same similar paragraph each week. So, yeah, it's still here. It does the same roles in Flundery, Strytron, Lyrical Lisk, and you'll probably be seeing it next week. Generic Exceed Cards. Generic Board Wipe Ability. And when you're not locked behind a $50 price point anymore, once again, huh, same pattern we continue to see cheap affordability fourteen dollars is not quite as enticing as you know a dollar fifty two dollars but you know what players will take that and they can actually do something with it yeah it no shocker there number six is space rock played in 22 of the top 32 decks in the european ycs i remember getting told that nibiru was bad this format by some people but all right all right, Nibiru is not just a must-own card, but it's format-shaping force, largely accompanied by what it seemed to be designed to do. There's nothing else really to say about this. I mean, to be fair, when you're playing an entire tournament where, uh, is that, is that all just Swordsoul? Uh, you look everywhere around, you're like, Swordsoul? 
sword soul, sword soul, sword soul, sword soul, sword soul, sword soul, when everything is sword soul. Alright, uh, I understand, like, the they can make Chao Fang and lock you out of the Nibiru, but they can't lock you out of the Nibiru. Well, Nibiru looks mighty powerful in those situations when it actually resolves, ladies and gentlemen. So, that being said, alright, staple, affordability, exact same thing here. And, uh, you know, I mean, hey, you can cross it out if you really think it's that much of an issue. And that means that you'd have to play cross out designators which is something that you don't really want to do as it is so cards already questionably as it is now number five here's a dusted gold so malicious bane nearly made top 10 all right at 15 but as an optional one of it hasn't held a high demand the way that evil hero a dusted gold does here's the thing you know most hero players are only playing one a dusted gold when malicious bane is it is it is who are you hero players and why are you trying to play triple at just a gold? But okay, this card might not see any competitive play right now, but it's been on the wish list of GX fans for a while. I'm just, please guys, leave a comment down below. Tell me, are people really trying to play triple at dust of gold in their decks, you know, for their one malicious main? Because that to me is some really weird Yu-Gi-Oh right there. I don't know. I just chalk it up to GX fans wanting to have play sets of the stuff to play, but then when you want triple play sets of Malicious Bane to enjoy with your triple adjusted gold, oh, well, who knows? But coming in at number five, that's interesting. Ah, look what's back. Wing Requital. Huh, it's almost like generic draw power is good. All right, Wing Requital has seen no play. All right, at most, um, this is true. Um, other decks would rather just play other things like Desires, you know, Bird Up doesn't really play Prosperity. Um, I think well, there were one or two that tried it in the earlier stages. Don't quote me on that too hard there. But it is a generic draw card that ends up seeing play, but most people, Akano I think was the real one that gave it a shot week one, and that was it. And it just literally fell off. I understand that Pot of greed S cards are good, but... As of the current format, players don't see a need for this. You can do better application with better cards. And I understand that, once again, $2 for a potential penny stonk that can go up to $10 to $15. I mean, it's got all the right tools to do so. It just depends on how the format wants to warp to allow this card some sort of play. All right. Number three is Pyre's Map. You know, for a third best-selling card, seeing this at a $1.65 price point is absolutely nuts. The fact that you literally get to search how many stupid cards, it's actually nuts. You can also search for Numeron Wall, by the way. I, I bet you guys didn't actually think about that. All right, you got Emmanuel Lily out here playing Numeron, of course. That's That should be a household name at this point. But, yeah, we don't know if he did play Pyrex, man. But, hey, man, you know what? You can do it, <laughs> I guess. The fact, the, the so many what-if scenarios here you can do with this uh, are good, but my other complaint is this conflicts with uh, pot-up extravagance, because then you know you can't get your draw because they both say at the start of the main phase. So unfortunately, you don't get that multitude of searching here, but that's how they decided that they wanted to balance this out for, against something like pot of extravagance. So I guess pick your poison. Number two was Stealth Kraken. Hmm. This card was the fifth most purchased card in our countdown last week, and the only trending card, Kraken Spawn, fell from the top 10. Still pretty popular at number 12. Now, this is just two plus water monsters, or two, yeah, two plus level four water monsters to make it at this point in time. Uh, we did see, yeah, I, we did see the huge spike in Beautiful Princess. This was ridiculous, by the way. The fact that this card shot up orbiting, no real surprise there. All right, but, you know, you need this to make this actually function. So to see the players are going for this, maybe just huge fans of Nash in general just want to have the Kraken Spawn to play, but... All right, and then the number one best-selling card of the week is uh, Verti Anaconda. Anybody seen this coming? Yeah. Dear Konami, what I want for Christmas is for you to fix your future problems. This card right here, not going to be bueno. All right? It's uh, not going to be a good time out here. <laughs> I don't need to really say anything else about this. All right? We, we know how crazy this is. All right? I don't think we have any other crazy info for the top 
selling cards for the week here, but Verte Anaconda maintaining that price point for two freaking weeks here, ladies and gentlemen. Just let that sink in, all right? When you have such a driving power force here at $11 in the format, yeah, it really says something about what's to come. Guys, what do you think about this week's actual insanity? Kraken is very interesting, and seeing that Verte is maintained for this long, it's actually kind of interesting. So guys, leave a comment about what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here later on the day. Some more cool, awesome content. Peace out, guys. Patrons! Thank you! Uh. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.